welcome to Live at Five. Another day of Live at Five. Welcome. Happy Tuesday. I am Raphael Lieban, your host of Live at Five, and it's nice to have you joining us. You could be here with us Monday through Thursday uh, at five for half an hour. If you'd like to join us on Zoom, please do so at 694-348-057. You also can catch us, of course, on Facebook Live, where we stream live Mondays through Thursdays. And uh, you can check us out on YouTube as well or Vimeo. Um, this uh, background today, I, I, uh, I like to give you some, you know, a, a pretty pretty scenery. This was a actually a photo that I took myself a couple of years ago uh, in the summer on a hike um, in Rocky Mountain National Park. This one is called Sky Pond, a very very uh, scenic spot, and it was one of the one of the furthest, most strenuous hikes I've ever done in Rocky Mountain National Park. It was about a 10 mile round trip. And we had to start real early in the morning to, to make it before the afternoon rains. And, uh, you know, I was just thinking about it because it's it was kind of warm and cold this week and some co cold we weather coming in. So I was thinking about a sunny afternoon in Rocky Mountain National Park. And I thought I'd put this beautiful uh, location on for you. You know, once again, we just have Colorado. Just we have the nicest places. And you can see the little path right down here, you know, see the little path. And uh, it's a great place to hike. You might even be able to snowshoe up to it in the winter, but that would be, it's, it's pretty far, it's pretty intense. And for, at one point in the last couple of, uh, last mile or so, um, there was, you actually had to climb up this waterfall, you know, so you're like climbing up rock, 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 and the water's rushing down past you and you're getting wet while it's happening. It was really, a, it was really a fun hike. And, um, you know, we do, we do, we do love Colorado. If we can't be in Jerusalem, we are happy to be in Colorado. Let me um, just uh, uh, tell you a couple of things that we have to look forward to this week. Um, tomorrow on the show, Live at Five, we're going to have a special uh, guest. We're going to have um, my friend Blake Seaton. I'm looking forward to having him, um, a fine young man from the early annals of, uh, of the Jewish experience at Sunday School, uh, one of our first, first, first students. He's going to be on the show tomorrow, moved back to Denver recently. Um, later in this week on Thursday, that's Wednesday, on Thursday, we have um, not at 5 p.m., but for those of you who'd like to join us, Clean Speech Colorado classes. Um, we, we know we, uh, we really focus our efforts on the November. Uh, we have a, the big campaign that we've done for, for the last couple of years uh, of Clean Speech Colorado has been in November, but we're offering some other opportunities to uh, refresh your inspiration and to sharpen your knowledge and awareness. And that is beginning on noon on Thursday. And um, it will be a, a short 30 minute Zoom class series for Thursdays for six weeks. If you'd like to join, please um, please do so let me know and I'll, I'll get you that link. Um, and just later in the week, uh, I like to mention Friday is and Shabbos are Rosh Chodesh Adar. We said that before, get ready Adar. When, when Adar arrives, we increase our joy and it's, it's, uh, it's the most festive, joyous month of the, of the year, and it starts on Friday and uh, on Shabbos. Okay, today um, on the show, a couple of interesting things. This came by my, in, across my desk today. Somebody, I have a, a clipping service, uh, you know, inter, cutting and, and sharing interesting uh, newspaper articles. And uh, this one actually appeared in the Intermountain Jewish News recently. And I, I just couldn't help but, but share at least a little bit of it with you. It is written by a, um, a fellow named Peter Yarrow, Jewish guy. Peter Yarrow, did the name ring a bell? Peter Yarrow is, uh, is better known as the Peter of Peter, Paul, and Mary. So uh, a very, uh, very well-known band for us old folks, folk music from the uh, 60s, Peter, Paul, and Mary. So he writes this article just recently um, uh, very, very nicely. And it's uh, and it's really it, it, you could it could have you could have taken it right out of the Clean Speech Colorado annals, you know. He, if if I could, I I would uh, you know invite him to come speak. He he, he wrote very passionately about uh, about uh, civility, uh, you know. I too, being Jewish, weep and am outraged by those words. He writes, uh, "The weaponizing of words is destroying civility." respect and desensitizing us to cruelty, crushing the goodness in us and in our society, contributing to the pain, alienation, and extreme polarization of our country. Isn't this the problem? How well said. Let me read a little bit more. The black hole of empathy has made it common, expected, and acceptable to hurt others, 
for the satisfaction of humiliating them, slandering them, or in an attempt to destroy their dignity, their reputations, and self-esteem. But the cold-blooded attack is all the more outrageous, demeaning, and ultimately dangerous to society. Somehow, we must establish, this is a very nice idea he shares there. Somehow, he says, we must establish a new belt line for verbal cruelty, abuse, and disrespect. You know what a belt line is. You're not allowed to hit below the belt. So we have to, we have to uh, lower the belt and, and decrease the, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the acceptability of verbal cruelty, abuse, and disrespect. Civility itself needs to be reestablished in terms of the manner in which we talk to one another. And lastly, he says, in order for us to survive, we must settle for nothing less than a life of the most meaningful of gifts, the gift of love and trust of one another. Yes, words matter a lot. How beautifully said. How is that? Okay, you know, Peter. So I, I didn't, uh, I didn't see anything from Paul and Mary yet, but we'll wait for that. Meanwhile, I, I thought that was very nice. And who knew that Peter, Paul, and Mary had a Jewish singer in it? Okay, I, I will admit I did not know that the Peter of the Paul and Mary trio was Jewish. But very well said. And I just want to, I just want to also, while I'm reading out of the IJN, I do want to give a, a real shout out to uh, to the team over there, particularly to Rabbi Hill Goldberg. Uh, the the um, uh, the editor in chief, and uh, and to particularly also to Larry uh, Hinken who works who works there, and I have coordinated with both of them for for two years of Clean Speech Colorado campaigns. God willing, many more. And just over the years, we've worked together tremendously well. They've been a real asset to uh, to the community and to us. So that's a a little kvell. I, ha I have to do a lot of kvelling today. So uh, we did a daily kvell yesterday, and that's my first. Uh, they do a nice job, and, and Rabbi Goldberg. If you if you really look back, um, if you if you want to, you could check out some of their archives. And every year when we did our Clean Speech Colorado campaign in the community, they um, they featured it. They um, he he wrote editorials in, in in favor of the campaign and speaking out. And so of course this would be uh, something very very appropriate for us to, um, to 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 read about and to publish. And I just wanted to share that beautiful. Uh, article there. Yeah, also today on the show, I wanted to share an interesting this week in Jewish history. So it, it happens to be that um, in this week there uh, is a yard site of a very, a very great individual who um, we have, uh, we, we know well and we owe a lot to. Um, that is, uh, his name was Yisrael Salanter. Israel Salanter. He was, a, he was and is generally regarded as the founder of the modern Musser movement. Lived in, in Europe in the, um, in the 19th century, in the, in the, I'm sorry, in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, um, and, was a very, and is a very significant contributor to, um, to, to uh, a very, very, very relevant, meaningful Jewish movements today, the Musser movement. Musser, uh, is, a, is something we've, we've spoken about before on Live at Five. It, it's sometimes tough to define this Hebrew word musar. In one sense of the word, it can mean, um, you know, uh, rebuke in the sense of comeuppance. If, you, if a person is, you know, is uh, uh, driving uh, through life carelessly, we would, we would correct them. We would call them out for their own benefit to hopefully to, to call them to improve. And, uh, and that's what Musser can mean. It can also mean our, our own personal attention to, um, to the way in which we, we lead our lives, the sort of the, the how we do, not the what we do, but the how we do it. And, and, and that in, in some degree could, could, could be, um, you could see it as a, as a kind of a Jewish focus on, on, uh, you know, on character development. That's probably another way it might, might likely likely be translated, character develop, character improvement, from a, from a from a very time honored Jewish perspective. Now, he didn't invent the concept of Musser, certainly not at all. In fact, uh, you know, he, he um, if anything, merely re-emphasized it as a um, as a as a strong component of a of a, a as a, an engaged Jewish life of the of the study schedule of someone who was busy. Trying to intake and and learn uh, everything they possibly could, Jewishly, Jewish Talmud study, Jewish textual study, Tanakh, Torah. Don't don't forget the Musser, he would have said. And uh, in fact, there's a beautiful uh, uh, idea 
I don't know if it's, it's said somewhat in jest. If you only have one hour to study, should you study the Talmud or should you study some Musser, some Jewish Musser? So he, he would have said, you should study some Musser, of course, because then you'll find another hour. That was really the, uh, you know, the answer to that one. And the, 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 so we have modern um, uh, voices that we would perhaps say are, are his direct um, students following in his, in his academic footsteps and in, in that the, the, the Musser voices of today's Jewish world um, in particular uh, recent uh, memory, uh, Rabbi Shlomo Volbi, Rabbi Volbi of blessed memory died just a few years ago. I, I attended some of his uh, talks and lessons and classes in Jerusalem. Um, and, and today he has a, um, a very prominent student or two. One of them, his name is Rabbi Ruvain Leuchter. And Rabbi Leuchter um, is well regarded as one of the prominent voices of Munster today. He has been to Denver. Um, I, I uh, have uh, the opportunity to, to, um, to occasionally to, to be in touch with him and certainly to join some of his ongoing classes and many of, of what, of, you know, the, of the ideas and the, and the inspirational, uh, you know, ideas and lessons that he shares are shared with, um, with folks all over the planet by his students. Um, Rabbi Leuchter actually um, is uh, originally Swiss and he, he speaks of probably six or eight languages uh, and his English is, a, is delightful to listen to. He's a, he's a, a very powerful speaker, uh, not because he's a master of the English language, but because of the way that he weaves together a multitude of languages to put together an idea. So, you know, it's really, it's a, it's a, it's a pleasure to, uh, to hear insights said, um, you know, in, from, from such an interesting speaker, his Rebbe Revolbe was also Swiss. But Ruben, Rabbi Yisrael Salanter's yard site was this week. And so we remember him on his yard site and uh, we appreciate the, the emphasis of, of, uh, of Jewish, Jewish scholarship and, and, and study onto Musser, which, um, you know, what would be the great, if I had to ask you, it was a quiz question for you. What's the, the sort of the, the most uh, primary text of the Musser movement? Okay, if I had to ask you that. Now, I'm not saying there's a right answer to this necessarily. There are a couple of answers you could give. So here they are. Number one, you might tell me that the, the Kirke Avos, Ethics of Our Fathers, is something that people would often uh, would point to if they had to say the earliest Musser work. You know, that's a very famous one. It's a collection of, of ethical type, Musser type teachings uh, in, in, in one, one specific tractate of the Mishnah. So that's pretty old. One might go a little more recent and say some of the classic Musser works would be even well before Rabbi Sol Salanter, um, that may be the Mesilis Yesharim, the Ramchal, Ramosha Chaim Litzato from, from the 16th century in Italy. He wrote one of the others, which is considered to be a tremendous classic. The Mesilis Yesharim is, the, is, is in English, the path of the just. And that's a great one that you can get in English and it's, and it's very, and, and lastly, you know what you might actually point to. You might actually point to the book of Deuteronomy. Yes, Moses' own, you know, uh, final book of his five books of the Torah, um, the book of Deuteronomy, one could, I think would, would be accurate to say is perhaps the earliest work in which we're focusing on, um, we're focusing on the uh, sort of that kind of, of focused teachings of character improvement and drilling down to the wise. One could, one could say that also. Meanwhile, our, um, we want to recognize uh, the, the, the life and the passing this week of Rabbi Sol Salant, or not, he, he didn't die this week, but his yard site was this week. Okay, um, now uh, just want to uh, take you back out from the studio here, uh, heading back out to the, uh, the great outdoors. This was a, um, it was a trip that I took a few years ago to, uh, in the summer to the, this is actually the Redwoods in California. The, the um, Pacific Ocean is right over there. And, um, and we were doing um, zip lining. I don't know if you can really see it, but somewhere behind me, there's, a, there's a, the line actually. This is zip lining through the redwoods. We were uh, 100 or 150 feet up in the air. Um, and these are trees, which some of which are uh, in that, in this basic area of California, redwood forest, you have, you have trees that could be as old as, as, as 2000 years old. Incredible things, the redwoods. And we saw them uh, two summers ago. And I took this picture as we were zip lining through the redwood forest. Um, and, uh, and again, when it gets cold, 
I, I like these kinds of backgrounds. The other thing I wanted to uh, uh, also mention today, this is another daily kvel, is I had the best sandwich today at the East Side Kosher Deli. And, and if that's not worth something else to, to, you know, to talk about, if you, you know, when you, when you travel out of town, uh, the, you know, you come back and you, and you, you know, so people say, oh, where, where were you? And you say, well, I went to such and such a town. The first thing they ask you is, well, where'd you eat? You know, like, uh, what's, what, what did you, what, what good kosher food did you get while you were there? And when people come to, to Denver, for sure, where they, they're going to stop, if, you know, the, one of the main stops they're going to make is the East Side Kosher Deli. And if you've ever been to Denver from out of town and, you know, you're, 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 you're careful about your, your kosher food, you have been there to the deli and you, and you know it well. So the, today I was, I was out uh, at the uh, deli for lunch with a friend and, um, and I had the best Reuben sandwich. Now, uh, a Reuben is a very Jewish meal. Uh, you know, as the name implies, you know, it's a, it's 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 named for uh, for our great forefather Ruvain, who was a child of Jacob. This is, I guess, was his favorite sandwich, and uh, and so so today, still today, it's still called that. And it happens to be corned beef on rye, hot with um, with onions and like a what's called a Russian sauce, Russian dressing. You know, I I don't know, I didn't realize maybe Ruvain was uh, Ben Yaka was Russian. But it's a delicious sandwich, and the Eastside Kosher Deli is so, so, so good. So I wanted to mention that particular today because I think this week um, in, in Denver County uh, COVID restrictions, we just stepped down from orange to yellow. Great news, everybody. Orange to yellow, and that means, means that now, at, whereas the restaurants that were operating at 25% capacity are allowed to go to 50% capacity, it's time to get out and uh, and go sit in a restaurant. I did it this afternoon. It feels like, you feel like such a mensch. You know, you could take your mask off while you're at the restaurant. It feels like old times. Like it's, it feels like 2020 BC, way back to uh, those days before all this happened. And you could you could like sit in a restaurant and have a normal Reuben sandwich. And and where should you go? You should go to the East Side Kosher Deli. What an unbelievable experience. Um, and speaking of kosher, I had a uh, I had a very lovely meeting. I just wanted to t tell you about actually at the Jewish Experience on Sunday with with actually one of the um, one of a, of the country's foremost voices in in kosherus in kosher food um, is a, um, a rabbi of the name of Shalom Fishbane. So Rabbi Shalom Fishbane is currently hailing from Chicago, and I got to have a, about an hour meeting here at the Jewish Experience. He was traveling from Chicago to Denver. Uh, on Sunday. Uh, he may have even had a, Ru a Reuben sandwich at the Eastside Kosher Deli after a meeting. I could very well have done that. I don't know. But um, Rab Rabbi Fishbein is the head of, uh, of Kosherus at the CRC. Now, CRC stands for the Chicago Rabbinical Council. And you may see it on a lot, a lot of kosher products. You see a triangle with a CRC written on it. It's a big R with two little C's on the side in a triangle. And that is a uh, is a, a, a very prominent American kosher supervising agency from Chicago, the CRC and the, the Chicago Rabbinical Council. They also have a very good Kashrus app for your phone. If you if you're have a phone that you have apps on it and you want a great app for kosher information, download, look for and download the CRC kosher app and they have product uh, information galore. If you're wondering, you know, if I, if you see like a cherry Coca-Cola and it doesn't have any kind of an insignia on it whatsoever, but is it kosher? You can look up on the CRC app. They also have, they have a liquor list, kosher liquors. You want to know this one, that yes, that one not. They have products galore, all kinds of great stuff. It's a great app. So Rabbi Fishbane and I actually have a, have an interesting uh, friendship, uh, acquaintanceship, I guess it would better say, from about 20 years. Um, we were students uh, about the same time in, 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 a, in a rabbinic training program uh, back in Jerusalem uh, a little 20 years ago. I actually found out that my, the, the rabbi that I learned all about kosher from in my, in my rabbinic training program was his uncle. I didn't realize this until Sunday when we were schmoozing. And, uh, and uh, that then, and I realized that uh, I reminded him of that we both were students of Rabbi Shon, Rabbi Michal Shon, and uh, when we we're learning about Kashrus, and he said, yeah, that was my uncle. Great family. Now, more interesting that Rabbi Fishbane himself is from Denver and went to Hillel Academy until he was in the second grade. Who would have thought? Is that unbelievable? His father 
was a shochet, a someone who was like a like a like a poacher, ritual butcher here in Denver back in the day, and now he is a uh, you know a, a leading voice in in kashras in the country. Really amazing. You know what he said? So so here I was giving him a little tour of the Jewish Experience office. We looked at he po- pokes his head into the kitchen, you know, and and it's really you know you you watch him as a, as a this is a professional supervisor of kosher food walking into your kitchen. So you could, you know, your heart's beating like this a little bit. And, but he's looking around and I know he knows what he's looking at, you know. His eye uh, lands on a little cutout. We have a little cutout piece of paper on a magnet on the fridge, which is a list of the kosher supervising agencies. It's from many years ago and it's a, and it's a very incomplete list. And he looked at it immediately, he looked at it for about 30 seconds and he said, oh, it's out of date. Because this, because this isn't right and that isn't right, so I said, "Oh yeah, we have to update it." He, um, he pointed out. I asked him. I said, "Yeah, how many?" So listen to this. This is interesting. How many kosher supervising agencies do you think there are in America today, or in the world today? Let's just say in the world, how many kosher How many agencies overseeing kosher? So let's see. We we talked about the CRC. We know we have um, our local. VAD, our local kosher certifying agency, which is called the Scroll K. And we have maybe, you know, about the OU, and maybe you could name a couple more. Um, there, uh, the OR, the Orthodox rabbis, the R with the circle around it, is not a kosher supervising agency, okay? Don't, don't rely on that. But there are a lot of them. How many are there? So he said, there's about 1,500. Unbelievable. Can you imagine? 1,500. This is an industry that has blown up in the last 50 years. There are 1,500 or so different agencies supervising kosher food across the, you know, around the globe for Jewish people. If it isn't easy to get kosher food now today, I just can't even believe it. Uh, and, and he said now, he did say that of those 1,500, um, not necessarily all of them are, uh, let's say, recommended. You know, some are a little bit more recommended than others. So, you, you know, you, you, that's why you would want to um, always ask questions, and if you see a new one on the market and you don't recognize it, you know, check in with somebody that you trust that would tell you if this one is a is a recommended one because it's a big, it's become a big industry. It's a blown up huge industry, and with anything, there's a, you know you want to make sure and 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 um, and get good, uh, solid, trustworthy advice about you know important things, you know, and who you trust. If you needed a good doctor, if you have you were if you were looking for a surgeon for something. You'd, uh, you'd ask around and you make sure you got a good recommendation. There's a lot of doctors out there, but not everyone is the one you want to do your surgery. So you would ask around and you'd get in the know. Same thing here. You, uh, you want to find out, make sure you uh, ask before you, uh, you take a, um, you know, pay, bring, a, bring a purchase, uh, a product uh, that is kosher for, for you. Um, but, uh, but it was nice to have Rabbi Fishman in town and hailing the fact that he hails from Chicago, we were schmoozing a little bit about my favorite topic, clean speech, Illinois, because I got an opportunity to, to tell him about the big campaign, which is uh, there's, there's going to be um, a small campaign on the, on, a, on the campaign, on the, on the college campus in Champaign. We thought we, we mentioned that yesterday, the Champaign campaign. And, uh, and he is, uh, is going to be perhaps involved more with us in the, Illin, in the Chicago proper campaign. It turns out that that um, looking at the Jewish map of Illinois, which I did the other day, that Chicago is like all of Jewish Illinois. In many, in, in some way, I, I, like like Denver, maybe Denver Boulder is like all of Jewish Colorado. I mean, yes, there are plenty of Jews around Colorado, but if you're just talking about the bulk of the community, it's all here. You know what I mean? There's not like multiple communities, it's not like New York or something, or LA, or I mean, or, or California. You got lots of Jewish communities in California, but but in in Illinois, the primary Jewish community is in um, is in is really in Chicago. And frankly, just it, it, that's not even exclusive to the Jewish community because Chicago is a multi-million populace, you know, many millions of people, and and outside that, the next biggest city is like you know, a tiny, you know, quarter million. The best, the next biggest population of people in Illinois, much less, much less Jewish community. So if you, you know, in, in many ways, we were presumptuous when we called our clean speech campaign, Clean Speech Colorado, because it was mostly Denver, but you know, that's the Jewish community of Colorado anyway. And so you could do the same thing in Illinois. One could say that 
Illinois is really Chicago. Jewish Illinois is Chicago, basically, right? And if I've and if I've offended any uh, Jews from outside of Chicago and Illinois, uh, so you know you can you can uh, write a complaint. You can send me a complaint. Um, the uh, that really are uh, that was my list of things that I wanted to share. I just want to remind everybody we're gonna we're gonna looking forward to uh, guests on the show, Blake Seaton, and having uh, Shimsh and Ruben back on the show. There's that that uh, Ruben again from the uh, sandwich. And um, don't forget to get that out and support as Denver bumps down from yellow from orange to yellow. Don't go. Don't forget to go out and support your favorite kosher restaurants like the Eastside Kosher Deli, like Brooklyn Pizza. We have uh, an ice cream place. Hagen Dazs in the Cherry Creek Mall. We can get out there now and go have an ice cream. Also, High Point Creamery, Bonnie Bray. Also, you want to make sure and hit the bagel store, Rosenberg's Big Kosher. And um, and some now, so got some food trucks. And I just recently learned about a, um, a new kosher caterer called Ramon Caterers. I don't know anything about it, but I've seen a couple of, uh, of advertisements for it under supervision by our local Squirrel K Vada Kasha, since we mentioned them. Take a look for Ramon Caterers. Looks like a new kosher option. We are uh, we are delighted to have that many options, and we hope that there there continue to be more. And the more that we give them our business and support them now, especially now that we can, we um, we uh, the more we we support them, the more of them will. Okay, that's our show for today, folks. We're going to jump up a little bit early. Have a wonderful, a healthy, and a holy, and we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow for a special guest tomorrow on Live and Drive.